Hey guys, if you're watching this video, it probably means that you're ready to run an event or a series of events, um, in which case, well done, it's uh, exciting stuff. So I thought I would just make a quick video for you to uh, see the exact uh, tournament features that are available on Sports Challenges. Right, you would first of all go to challenges.co.za forward slash m and log in there with your username and password. Right now I've just logged in as a dummy owner just to show you, show you some dummy stuff. There are two options available to you. If you're just going to run a single event, you would dive right in and go to my tournaments. But if you're going to run a series of events, you would go to my series and add series. Here you would name your event. Choose the sport, define the starting date and the end date, and also define how the rankings will be calculated. We have found that the best five scores over the past 90 days are pretty accurate if you run weekly events, but if your events are less frequent than that, you want to extend it to a longer period or uh, less scores. Put in the description for your event and add your series. Once we've added the series, we look at the series over here. We go back home and now we add a tournament by going to My Tournaments and Add Tournament. Select your series from the drop down, name your event, and name your location, choose your sport. We went for Darts 501. Define your starting date. I'm not going to change any of the times. You would define your minimum and maximum player level. I normally just go for the maximum if it's an open event. Define your entry fee for the event. Make your visibility public if you want it to appear on the Sports Challenges website and make it private if you don't. Because this is a dummy event, I wouldn't want to make it public, so I would go for private. Put in some additional comments. Right, down here you can Choose whether you want to use the default banner image or upload your own. The banner image is what you would post to Facebook afterwards to get extra mileage for your event. This is what it looks like. This is the default standard image that will be used. The player profile pics will be uploaded to it. It will be automatically generated by the system. The game number and the date and the score will appear. If you want to design your own results banner, this is what it should look like. You can do any kind of background you want, put a sponsor's logo. If you're going to do a sponsor's logo, put it in the bottom right corner. Over here it will show what stage of the competition it was. Third place playoff, final, semi-final, whatever the case may be. So over here you can design anything. Just leave these spaces open as well as this over here. All right back to the event choose then yes i'll upload a 600 by 500 pixel image if you are going to do your own event image and click on add tournament <clears throat> now this brings us to the next page i would then choose a file and submit to upload it will show me what it looks like when it's uploaded it will also show me a sample of the complete version when I click return to tournaments, it would have created my event over here, part of the dummy series of dummy events that I've just also set up. To edit your event, go to edit, change your date to something in the future. And submit changes. Now because the dummy event is in the future, I can send invites. When I click this button, it will send out invitations to all registered players for this sport in the region. Don't abuse this feature as people tend to mark the emails as spam eventually. Right, when we are ready to run the tournament, we go to view entries and then view on PC screen. This is just to get a larger format view on the tournament. As players walk through the door, you can go and add players. 
I'm going to go for the series of dummy players. Add them as they come in. If you've got a new player showing up that's never played before, click on Quick Register New Player, fill out his pedigree, update, and then go and add him from the list as normal. Going to quickly add a number of players. Right, now that I've added eight players to the tournament, it will show me the suggested format for the tournament down below. Two pools of four players playing round robin, after which semi-final knockouts follow. All right, as I add more players, this will change to a pool of four and a pool of five. Another player, it will be two pools of five. The next player that I add will take it to triple elimination, which is the revolutionary format that's built into the system. The triple elimination system basically says three strikes and you're out. It recalculates the seedings after every round and automatically suggests new challenges for every round. When there are only eight players left in the tournament that have not lost three matches, it will break into the quarterfinal knockouts from there. There will also be playoffs for all other positions, meaning that there will be a loser semi-final, a fifth place and a seventh place playoff as well. Let's add another player. This takes us to the next format, which is three pools of four. If we add a 13th player, then we start looking at a qualifier with split knockouts which means there's one qualifier round and a plate division for all the losers and a quarterfinal for all the winners. In this format, the top seeds will take a bye wherever applicable. Again, there will be playoffs for all positions, meaning a loser semi-final, a fifth place and seventh place playoff. We can go along and add more and more players to the tournament. It will change slightly every time. Very importantly, we cannot start running the tournament unless all players on the list are marked as present. Now that we've marked all players at present as present, you can see the go for it button has appeared over here. When we click on go for it over here, it will automatically calculate the seedings according to the existing rankings. If there are none, this will be pretty much random seedings, but we can adjust the seedings according to our discretion. So if you've got a good player showing up and you know he's good, make him the top seed. I don't think anybody's going to mind. Rather that than have a top player or the second best player losing in the first round or something to that effect. Right, so we can move our seeds up and down using these buttons. One up, one down, or five up. Once we've created the first match, the seedings will disappear and we can then start entering results. This screen also gives us a preview of the next round. So the number one seed and the number two seed on this format takes a buy into the second round. This player will wait for seed number eight, which is the winner from this game over here. The winner of the game always emerges with the top seed between the two players. Okay, so we can go ahead and create all the games in the round. And then we can start entering the results as they come in. Now that I've entered all the results for the round, I can proceed to the next round. It will predict to me all the next round matches. So as these games finish, but I'm not ready to proceed to the next round, I can look ahead to see which matches should take place and start them so long. When I click on proceed to next round, it will show me the first division and the development division matches. When you have a larger tournament, it will start with premier division on the left, first division in the middle and development division on the right. Again, I can create all the matches. And once I've done that, start entering the results. Great. Now that I've entered all the results for round two, I can see the preview for the next round. And I can proceed to next round. 
right here we've got the first division semi-finals between these two and these two the position playoffs which means the loser semi-finals and in the development division the semi-finals create the matches and enter the results and those games will also appear proceed to next round now we run the final stages you can enter results before you've created all the matches you might end up with a situation where some players leave early they don't play their final playoff now at the bottom you will see the tournament is complete and here's your final rankings because I didn't change much on the on the results I didn't cause for any upsets um, this player started as seed number one all the way through the tournament stayed at number one and scored a total of 14 points this point system is calculated based on the levels of all the players participating in the tournament we had 14 players starting on level 1, all of them. 14 times 1 point gave us a total of 14. Then it breaks down 90% of the first place, 90% of the second place, 90% of the third place, and so on and so forth. In exceptional circumstances, we can also update the strength. Let's say we want to make it 20. We can update and it will give the top player 20 points and break down by 90% per level again. Now we can go look at the completed challenges. This will also give us the breakdown again. Here we can also update the score again. And then it will show us the final in the second division, the seventh place in the cup division, the first division, the final in the cup division, the third place in the cup division, fifth place in the cup division, third place in the second division, and so forth. Now, when we click on create image, it will create the image based on the results banner that we uploaded. This can be saved and uploaded to Facebook, tagged with the player names for maximum exposure. Okay, so right now I'm just going to quickly reset the tournament to show you another tournament format. The reset feature is there in case you have to start over with a latecomer arriving or whatever the case may be. If you've made a mistake on the draw, forgot to put a player in or something to that effect, you can simply click on reset and click here to proceed. Right now I'm just going to remove a few players from the draw until I end up with this kind of scenario with three pools of four, just to show you the pool play format. Everybody is marked present, so I can say go for it. It will show me I've got no pools of five participants, but I've got three pools of four participants. Total pool matches will be 18, which means six in each pool. Here are all my players. I can again move the seedings up and down. And once I've done that, I can confirm and schedule the pools, and it will automatically show me the draw the sequence of, of games as well as the pool standings for all three my pools you can zoom in zoom out a little bit to make sure everything fits on one page as I enter the results the pool standings will automatically update as you can see Now that I've entered all my results, I can see the pool standings for each of the pools. There's a clear winner in each pool, 3, 2, 1 and 0, matches 1, matches lost is the other way around. That's the sets or the frames or whatever the format is of the, the sport you're playing, 1 and lost. Now it will automatically calculate my quarterfinals, which I can click here to continue. It will jump into the format of knockouts that you've seen on the qualifier with split knockouts format. I can simply go and create my quarterfinals, then enter my results, and when I proceed to the next round, it will automatically give me my semi-finals 
and position playoffs, which is the loser semi-finals. I can again go and create the matches. And once I've entered all my results, I can again proceed to the next round. And once I've entered all my results, the tournament will be complete and the final standings will be visible below. I can also go to completed challenges and again it will show me the final standings as well as what match was played in what division as before. I'm going to reset it again so that I can show you the triple elimination format which is only applicable when you have exactly 11 players in your tournament. So I'm deleting one of the players now it shows me triple elimination plus quarterfinal plus semi-final plus final. When I click on go for it, it will automatically calculate the seedings again. Here are the suggested matches. You will see that one player takes a bye in the first round. There's only five matches with two players. There's 11 participants. Click on use these matchups. It will show me the, it will show me the games to play. As I enter the results, the standings below will update. And once I've entered all the results, I can generate the next round of matches. Here are the suggested matches again. This uh, seed number 9 will take, uh, take a higher level buy because there is no opponent. Use these matchups. Again, we enter the results. Still 11 players remaining in the competition. So I would go, again go to triple elimination. Use these matchups. It is inevitable that there will be an upset on the seeds and a double up of games where a certain player has played a certain player before in the same competition. It's inevitable and it's unavoidable. Just go with it. It is a triple elimination system, which means a player can lose three times, even if it means all three of those times are against the same other player. Click on use these matchups. Enter the results. And we are still sitting with 11 players in the competition. We just continue in this fashion with another round. This competition format is considerably lo longer in terms of rounds than the pool play and the qualifier with split knockouts. So it's important to keep the matches short and not overrun. Right now we can see the first player has been eliminated. They turn red, but we've still got 10 players left. If we enter this result, we've got two players knocked out, but we've got nine players left. So we continue with one more round of triple elimination. Use these matchups. Three players eliminated, so after this, we'll go to quarterfinal stages. Four players eliminated. Still four players eliminated. Seven players remaining in the competition. What will happen now is that the quarterfinals will be suggested. It will, however, include the eighth player on the rankings. So we can go ahead and create these matches and we continue in this fa fashion until all matches and playoffs are completed. Go to my series and view rankings. The rankings are completely automatically updated. The 7 day and 30 day column means the change in the past seven days and the change for that player in the past 30 days because this is a brand new series it won't show anything here but I can show you on an existing series how that plays out obviously this series has been running for a lot longer and here you can see the change for the past seven days in the past 30 days 
That's pretty much all you need to know regarding running a tournament or a series of events. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email on chris at challenges.co.za. Happy tournament directing!